What's up, guys? Welcome to today's class. I'm here with my friend Matt, so you guys know you're not going to forget his name. Uh, welcome to the class today. We're going to be uh, kind of adjusting his haircut, so I'm going to actually pop over to the other screen. I can see all of you guys logging on. I see the chat in all the different areas. So check out Matt's hair. He's obviously been growing it for a while. How long have you been growing this? Uh, it's probably been six. Six months, seven months. So uh, so this is kind of a typical situation that I'm seeing a lot now where a lot of guys are just kind of either trying to grow their hair a little bit longer and then it just starts to get too thick and too heavy. So today what I want to do is I want to share with you guys and as I do it, kind of how to make some adjustments with the parts that are super thick within the hair. And then also you got to understand that how hair grows, it's going to grow uh, this top part. You don't need it to be the same length as this bottom part. So you can cut some layers into it, add some movement, remove some weight. And then I think you'll have a ton more success with it uh, every day trying to, trying to deal with it, right? Um, so a couple of things, I just want a little housekeeping or uh, talk about the sponsors a little bit. Uh, those of you guys out there that have been watching this for a while, you guys know that we are live on Minerva Beauty's Facebook as well. Let me go, let's see if I can get to this right here. Um, so we're live on Minerva Beauty's Facebook. Um, they've been a huge sponsor of this show for a long time, so thank you to them. Uh, if you guys are looking to upgrade your salon furniture, check out Minerva Beauty. Uh, everything that we have in our salon came from them, uh, the chairs, the mirrors, everything. So if you guys are looking for upgrading your salon, just go to them, and they have the best prices. They're a great company. They're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so, you know, local shipping is quick, all of that stuff. So uh, definitely check them out. Also know that you can download our app. So all of these classes that you guys see, uh, you go to our website, freesaloneducation.com. You can download the app, become part of our community. Uh, those of you guys that are new, type new in the chat. If you're an OG, you've been watching this for a long time, type that in the chat and then also know to help everybody else out that's new to the classes, let them know where to download the app, where to uh, pick up the tools, all that stuff. You guys know the drill. So uh, let's get started. All right, we're going to pop over here. Let's get started with the class. So sectioning is important. Um, let me zoom in. There we go. Let me turn you a little bit. So a couple other things, guys. If you um, if you have a question, type Q and put your question in the chat that way. And if you uh, that way, I can see it because I'm looking at the chat. I see all of you guys. I'm looking at the chat from all the different platforms on the internet. So that way, I can kind of differentiate what you guys are just chatting about and if you guys actually have a question. So just type Q and put in your question in the chat. All right, so the way that we're going to section this off, I look at the parietal ridge uh, as kind of a starting point. I also look at the recession point in the head as well. So I'll go across here. I'm going to go just below the recession point. Now, why do I want to kind of section at this, at this curve of the head? Well, that's where the head will start to shift over. And when the hair starts to fall, that's where it starts to pile up and get the heaviest. So as I work through uh, his haircut, I want to separate top and bottom. So I'll work my way around. And then this is kind of an area where Matt was complaining about as well because it starts to wing and flip out. So what I'll do is I'll cut into that just a little bit to help soften it. Um, over here. And grab a couple clips. And we'll work through the back. Now, some of you guys may have seen Matt in a previous video. We were just talking about it. We actually filmed him. He was actually one. You were one of the first YouTube videos I ever shot. Remember when you fell out of the chair? I'm an OG, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but there's another video that where we talk about cutting a calyx. So we used Matt for that one as well. And that's... One of the most important things as well when you are sectioning this out, you got to focus on that calic area to make sure that as I'm sectioning it, all this is kind of falling in natural fall, and I'll work around that. So I'll show you guys that in a second. 
we work through. Got the top separated from the. Now I'm going to work. I'm going to wet down the bottom area, and we're going to start working to cut some nice soft layers into the hair. Matt's also a musician, so we got to promote that a little bit okay. as well. Okay. well. We'll give everybody your uh, your page. Awesome. All right. So the challenge with hair this long is that it's not long enough to just lay and it's you don't want to go shorter because he's trying to grow it. So you got to make those adjustments. They got to be subtle and they all have to kind of have a purpose. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb the hair back just like this. And we're going to start working diagonal back partings all the way through. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be point cutting into his hair. So diagonal back just like this. My finger angle will mimic the parting. I'm going to come through and I'm just going to soften and take off about a half an inch of hair. and my elevation will go up right around the top edge of this. And the reason I start to raise my elevation is because I want to soften that weight line that's going to happen. If I don't elevate it and I just cut a straight line across like this, it's going to get super heavy up there, which is what it's already doing naturally. So what happened with Matt's hair here is that he's just been growing out a regular haircut. A regular haircut gets clippered here, and it's short, and it's all pretty much the same length, or tapers and gets a little bit heavier with a clipper cut up at this top area. So when that grows out, you end up with a heavy kind of graduated feel, which then turns a little helmety or mushroomy on the kind of on the end, back end of that. So what we're doing is we're just making that adjustment of cutting it into layers first, and second, shifting my finger angle as I work towards the top of this section to then layer it instead of graduate it. So just like that. And now it's hard for you guys to see probably at this point, but it's laying a lot softer and it's not uh, hitting that buildup of weight uh, around the ear. So same thing, continue down. Now the other thing with Matt's hair is that it gets a little fluffier feeling when it starts to dry. So my goal is to add a little, a little bit of um, kind of soft teeth marks in it, if, for lack of better words. So as I go in and cut, instead of cutting a blunt line, which will just make it fluffier, I'm actually going in and uh, cutting a jagged line so that it'll lay nice and soft. Again, high elevation around that parietal ridge. And I'll continue working through the back, and then I'll go into the nape. So I don't continue through the bottom until I'm done with the top. So, Matt, what is the best way to cut short hair, whether it's man or woman with a cowlick or whorl. So we'll go over the cowlick area when I get up there. Um, and then I think I can give you guys some pretty good tips on that. Matt doesn't have a super strong cowlick, but um, everybody's 
has one. So So again, going through 90 degrees out from the head. Keep it in layers. Work my way. So I haven't cut this under nape, uh, the nape area yet. I'm going to move to the opposite side, work my way back to this point, and then I'll go through the nape. So we'll go here. What you guys will notice is I'm not changing a lot. I'm, it's, everything I'm doing is very subtle because I don't want to take too much length away from what his goals are, which is to grow this a little bit. So here, elevation up. What about styling product? What should I be putting in if I'm just going to let it air dry? So Sherry, that's a good question as well. We're going to go over a couple different products that uh, Matt can use. If you're just letting your hair air dry, um, for me, I like a pomade type product because it's just a little bit heavier and it's a little bit more oil based, which will help with um, when you're when you put in more of a matte product and you put it in wet hair, it tends to dissolve a little bit. So the oily based products will kind of stay in your hair and hold it even as it dries. So something more like Barber's Classic, things like that. Couple more, we're starting to crisscross the previously cut sections. You could also razor this if you wanted to. That would give you this similar effect as the point cutting. So now this whole area all through here is nice and light uh, before it was kind of poofing out. Now the heaviness is kind of on the bottom, which I like, uh, but what I want to do is just go in and soften it a little bit. So I'm going to use uh, the tri razor for this part just because it's quick and easy to get through it. So I'll turn that all the way over here. And this area is where we want to work in. We want it to be nice and light because this is obviously the part that's going to get long the fastest. Uh, you don't want it to be like a tail or a mullet. Uh, maybe a little bit, right? But not, not like Joe Dirt-ish. Right, right. All right, so let me go in here. Vertical section, I can see up above where I cut into it. And I'm just going to softly kind of work through these sections vertically. So hold the hair out. I'm just going to cut into it. This will also make it fall nice and soft. But it's up this area. Then if you want to take any of the length off, you can always pinch and cut into it just to soften that. Take out a little bit of length. Now, if I feel like I have any weight build up through this area, another good move to make is just take your texture 25 and just swipe in there, and it'll remove just a little bit 
of the hair and help skinny it up a little bit more. So I can always go in here, feel like it's building up a little bit, and slide. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Go here, hold the hair out. There's what I cut previously. And then the longer hair in the nape. So go in here, let the previous hair fall out, and just slide down and cut. Angela, that's good to hear. Just purchased that razor again with these. Jess, awesome. So, again, we cut the nape. We work those layers through. Then we've got the connection of these two sections. If it feels a little bit thick or appears to be a little bit thick, then I go in, texture 25, and I just slide mid-shaft to ends, just remove a little extra weight and blend those two sections together. And if you want to adjust any of the length, you can do that through the bottom. So now what I like to do is once I get to this point, then I'll go through and blow it dry, see how, like, how much weight we've taken out and how much weight we still need to remove. So. Blow dry just a little bit. All right, so another tool that I really love using is the Uriah number six. Uh, this is a texturizing scissor. Um, the reason I like this one is this one has a blade at the bottom. So what I do is I use that blade to kind of guide through the hair, and I'll cut these kind of diagonal slices through it. What that's going to do is, again, remove some weight from this haircut and just soften it. So what I like is that right now we don't have – a huge buildup of weight. You can see the texture and the layers in there. Um, that's kind of what we want. We don't want that helmet look. We want to flatten all this out. So just going in, using the texturizing scissor at a diagonal to work through this nape area and kind of separate it a little bit. Um, for me, I can see the separation because I'm here in person. For you guys, you can kind of see it. Um, I want you guys to really be able to see it and the more I do this, the more you will. So um, you don't want it to hide in the, in the darkness. You want to kind of bring out some light and airiness to the back. Go through here. Again, 
just kind of sliding through. And then the same thing on the sides. So still want to go around the ear, kind of clean up all that area. But for now, I want, no matter how Matt wears this, if he wears it forward or backwards, I don't want there to really be weight in it. So I'll go through, I'll kind of comb all the hair forward first, work through it that way. And then I'll comb it back around the ear. So if he wants to tuck this back, it's going to be nice and light that way as well. So I'll come back through. Another thing I like is to have an even handle texturizing scissor. That way I can flip it and I can have the teeth on the bottom if I want, or I can flip it and have the teeth on the top so that that way I can use that blade to glide through it. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So right here, come through, just soften. Somebody said to me once that it's not about the hair that you cut, it's about the hair that you don't cut sometimes. For me, this length of hair is that's the most important. Is what are you leaving on there and how is it going to react to what you cut off? So go in and leave some of this hair so that it really kind of brings out a unique shape to the haircut. goal is Matt shows up to play music somewhere and already before he even touches the guitar, they're like, whoa, this guy, <laughs> this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> I can tell by his haircut. So I have a funny story, Matt. I, I don't think I told you this, um, but you sing Journey quite a bit, right? A little bit. So I, uh, the other day, like a month ago, actually, um, I got a phone call and this guy was like, I want to get my hair cut, um, but I'm coming from Staten Island and uh, I'm going to drive out there. I saw Matt on YouTube and but I'm looking, I got, I'm going on tour, he says, and I have some events coming up and I just need my hair cut. So, and he's in the entertainment business and you know, New Hope, like everybody's in the entertainment business. So so he's like on his way here, and I didn't think anything of it because I just think, all right, somebody in the entertainment business, can't wait to hear this guy's story, whatever. So I sit there, I'm cutting his hair, he's got a mask on, so I can't see who he is. Um, and I never looked at his name on the book or anything, I just knew his name was Steve, and I uh, was cutting his hair. So I start cutting his hair, and he's telling me like a couple of things that just sounded a little like not normal, like that he, he had played Zoom uh, shows for, like, St. Jude and stuff. And I was like, that's kind of a big deal. And I said, well, what do you like more? Do you like playing over Zoom uh, or, like, to real people? Like, have you taken to the Internet a little bit? And he goes, well, I've, you know, Matt, I've played for 10 people and I've played for 75,000 people. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, that's a lot of people. Yeah. He's like... Uh, well, I don't, he's like, I don't know if you know, but I was the lead singer of Journey for eight years. And I'm like, really? Was it Steve Perry? No, it was Steve Jerry, who oh, was yeah, yeah. right after Steve Perry, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he came in. He had some long, curly hair. Too. Yeah, yeah well, he still has long hair, yeah. uh, <laughs> long black hair, and uh, it's not as curly anymore, and he's looking for a different, not a different style, because... You know, you got to keep him kind of having his look. Oh, but, yeah. but he was looking for something that kind of, he's like, do whatever you want. He's the nicest guy on the planet. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's super cool. So. That's a good spot, right? 
Yeah, who would have thought? He's still playing music? Is it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's be, right? yeah. Yeah, he's still playing music. Yeah, it's cool, dude. That's awesome. Never know. Never know what's going to happen. My mom was freaking out. <laughs> My mom was too. I, yeah. Well, he wanted to see the studio, so I brought him back here. And, uh, and then Hayden was back here, so he's, like, talking to Hayden for a while. Oh, that's awesome. Then he went into Christina's office talking to her. It was cool. It was really cool. That says a lot about you. You have all those years in Staten Island. Well, hopefully he does it again. That's, yeah. the, <laughs> that's the true test yeah. right there. I was like, it's cool to do it once, but it's really cool to do it twice. Yeah. Yeah. But he did text me a week later, and he was like, I love it. Oh, so awesome. that was good. Yeah. Hopefully he's being honest. <laughs> well, I, don't think he would have you <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> he would have ran far away. <laughs> All right, so now I'm moving through the top, guys. And what I want to do is I do not want to cut really any length off the top because that's the part that it is going to need to grow. But at the same time, it's going to be the heaviest part too. So I want to lighten it up around the edges, a lot of point cutting and just working through it. Also, this fringe that kind of comes across in the front with Matt here, it gets super thick right in this area. So that's where I want to cut into it as well. So a couple different things I'm going to do. I'm going to work through the top point cutting. And then when I get to the front, I'm going to actually section it away and work through it. All right, I'm gonna go to the top angle here, see if that'll. All right, so we'll work through the top. So vertical section through the top, point cut, cross. Again, keep that length. If for some reason, there shouldn't be really split ends uh, at this length. Split ends usually come with way longer length, but if there are, you can always cut a clean line, then point cut into it. Uh, that's really up to you guys. The other funny part was he was like, because I didn't know who he was for 75% of the haircut. So he's like talking to me and... I'm like, yeah, I play music with my brother. Like, I'm like, you know, he's like, oh, what kind of, what instrument do you play? And like, he's like, asking me all these questions. I'm like, guitar. He's like, oh, cool. And the whole time, if I would have known who it was, I would have never even talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not like a big talent uh, of my life. You know. That's funny. Dude, you've been them for, what, seven, eight years almost? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, eight years. He said... This is the craziest thing, too, because remember the movie Rockstar? Oh, yeah. So obviously that movie's not based on that exact story, but it's based on somebody else. But he said he was 38, so I'm 38. So we were the same age when he got the call, and he literally was working managing the gap. Oh, my God. And he got the call, and it was based on, like, um, one of the guys from Journey hearing hearing him sing once, and they said it sounded like a lost, like, or like an old Journey record that they never did or something. Wow. So he got the call, flew right to L.A., and the next week was on tour in front of thousands of people. Jeez, it's never too late. Yeah, you, you know? on your dreams. Crazy. <laughs> to be working at the Gap and get a phone call and change your life. Yep. So what I'm doing here, so I split this top area. So I come across the top and I section and I just let a little bit down at a time. What that do for me is just kind of let me work each section and make sure I figure out exactly where it feels heavy. So I'm going in here, a little point cutting, and then I let it fall back and I see how is it laying. Now it's laying nice and soft. So I just continue that all the way through, almost cutting like a round section, opening up his face a little bit just through here. Uh, how often do you get your scissors sharpened? I, so I get them sharpened 
like I think once every six months to a year is usually good, um, as long as you take care of them. I think more than that, it's a little unnecessary. Less than that could be okay too. It just depends on how much, how much hair you cut. I do a lot of dry cutting, so my scissors get dull a little bit faster. Um, so it's up to you guys. Then again, across the top, bring that hair down. I'll cut into it. Now look at this gap here. This is another thing that happens when you're growing out a shorter haircut. Um, it takes on the form of the head shape. So where the temple kind of comes here, there's a disconnect on the fringe. So I'm going to work into that. So I'll actually take that away as I'm cutting in and point cutting this because I want this from the, the recession point down. I want that to fall nice. I don't want to take any length off of that fringe area. So the fringe will do last. So right here, point cut, nice and soft. Last little bit. So now we're in the fringe area. This is really heavy right here. So I'm going to come across, bring this section over to me. I'm going to start cutting my line across the front. And I'll take another diagonal parting, bring that across the front. This will start my angle working over to the opposite side of the head. All right. So now, before I start to blow it dry, because I want to dry it fully and then work through it, and we're actually going to shampoo him just because I want to and I want to ha have his hair clean and then blow him dry in front of you guys, so we're going to disappear for a minute. Um, but the good thing about that is we'll play some music. You guys can chat in the chat, and then I'll be back with him. But what I want to do is I want to clean up around the edges first, uh, and then we'll go back and shampoo them. So um, right here, I'm going to clip up around the ear. And I don't want to take length off here, but I just want to clean up the sideburn area, make sure it all blends, and then we'll do the same thing in the back nape. So right here, just kind of start working those lines in. I don't take the length right away. Comb that forward, work up. Then when I get it there, then I can take my comb, put it under, tighten up that sideburn. Now in the back nape, can lift up his hair and I'll just kind of work the clipper or the trimmer up underneath. I still want to keep this kind of fringier look. 
I just want to cut those little kind of loose curlier hairs underneath out. All right, I'm still feeling like it's a little bulky on the one side, so I'm going to cut into that a little bit. And then... So right in this temple area, I'm just going to soften it using that texture scissor. And it just starts to collapse as soon as you start sliding in there and cutting. So Julie, can you cut the fringe same way as female? So it's the same concept. Um, it just depends on, it's really just about pushing weight. So it's definitely not a male-female technique. It's just how you want to push the weight over. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to shampoo mat. We're going to do it super fast. Um, you guys can uh, chat it up in the chat. I'm going to put on some music for you guys. And... We will be right back. Here we go.
All right. Did we, uh, we didn't beat the song. Close. Close. <laughs> nice. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. Just made the most sense to uh, shampoo them because that's what we do. And all right. So now that we've really taken out all of that weight, for me, it's kind of like I can really assess exactly what type of shape we have now that I've shampooed him, uh, kind of gotten all the loose hairs out. I'm in control of the hair at this point. So now I can kind of take a look again at that outer perimeter and just see where we're at. Then we'll start to style it and do any more cutting that we need to do. The other thing that I like to do is because his ears, like I don't want to cut them out too much, but I do want to tighten up the area around the ears a little bit. All right. So right in here. So what I'll do is I'll take a triangle out from where the ear is, and that's where I'm going to tighten things up. So we'll come across here, section down, like that, and then I'll section back off of the ear as well. And then this is the area that I'll assess. What I want to do is just take some of this hair. I'm just going to move a little bit tighter. So almost like concave in a way, just collapsing right above the ear and just allowing some of that length to play into it. That way, it won't get bushy real quick, but you still have your length. So same thing here. I'll pull up. My the tip of my finger here towards my body. And we'll cut a little shorter towards the interior of my finger. This is a good technique for pixie cuts as well. Just kind of going in, allowing the area to be a little fringier, but then taking out some of that weight. Then when this hair falls over it, it's still nice and long, just not as bulky. So right here in the temple area, I see a little extra length. And what I want to do is I kind of want to connect. This is the fringe here. And it comes down and goes up a little bit. So what I want to do is just kind of connect in some of these pieces. So I can see where that goes up. So I'll slide my scissor up. And I'll just disconnect a couple of these pieces to go in connect to the rest of the cut. Just little details that I like to work in there because I feel like it brings everything together. All right. Oops. Let's do the other ear. Turn you this way. Forward, and I'll take that triangle out. So the last bit before we blow it dry 
is this nape area. So this, to me, when I was cutting into it, just got a little fuzzy and doesn't need to be this long at this point. So I'm just going to take just the edge of it off. Take a little extra off the back nape area. And then I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side here. All right, so now a little steady grip. So this product is great for kind of stamping in your blow dry and keeping the hair under control until you put the next product in. So I'm going to put this throughout his hair, and that'll help me with that kind of poofiness that can happen with longer men's hair. So that'll help control it a little bit, but obviously the cut at this point Kind of controlled that as well. So add a little bit of shine, a little bit of hold. And that will blow it dry.
So the biggest thing I want you guys to look at from this angle right now um, is that Matt, like the biggest challenges he was having was the bulkiness here. So you can see how it's laying a lot flatter. Um, but then as we pull this fringe over, that's something I definitely want to work on now is this fringe. But all through here, it's nice and sleek and, and falling nice. So you see the side profile. We got a little bit longer length, but then up through here, this is all layered, kind of textured through. So I'm going to do a little bit more point cutting to soften. Why is he so red? I know. It's, yeah, it's hot under these masks. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot, and we both have masks on. <laughs> I just turned the air down, but it's it's not working very well. <laughs> Go back to the beautiful eyes comments, guys. Yeah, right. Okay? <laughs> Pay no attention to the red. Help me out. You're not that red. No. That's fake red. That's... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That TV is like... Not really true. Detail, it? Yeah, it's not right. <laughs> it's a little bit of a liar. <laughs> so this is the hardest part about this cut, guys, is that it's not, I mean, it's, I can give you tips to cutting, but it's going to be different with everybody that you cut. So um, going through there, some people you might want to point cut into it, some people you don't. Uh, you might use the texturizing scissors up more often or not. Like, you really have to kind of throw in your professional opinion when you do this stuff. Like right now, I'm combing it through, and that's why I like to flat wrap it uh, around because now I can see, like right here, a little bit of extra weight. So I'll go in, I'll elevate that, and I'll just softly point cut into it to lighten it up. I don't want to change it, like I said before, um, but I know I can go in and just do that and lighten it up. So you guys got to make those choices. Now the fringe. It's heavy. I want this to be nice and light, especially it's hot out nowadays. It's getting hotter, so I want it to be even lighter for him. So texturizing scissor, and I'm just going to slide through and cut right on to the edges of this haircut. Like that. And work through it. Again, letting the hair kind of be where it's going to live. Slide that blade in and cut and drag. Why did you drive forward? Because that's how he's going to wear it. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on now. Um, yeah, so he's going to wear it forward, which I kind of like. I like he's got that style a little bit. Um, he could always, we're going to add a little bit more texture into the top here, which I think would be cool to get a little volume in there. But I like that forward style. If he wore it back, um, for me, he could. It wouldn't be a, a, a big deal. But... Um, and the height isn't really bad on Matt either, so he could wear it either way. But um, seem like, do you like wearing it off your face or? I do it both ways. Like I both, kinda, right? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Mood strike. Okay. But if I get this nice and soft on on his forehead, it'll be really light when he lifts it up off of his forehead.
Definitely not in need of hair, Matt. <laughs> that is a great thing. So I just kind of pushed it around. The biggest thing for me is that Matt is, has an easier time doing his hair when he leaves me, right? So I can make it look like whatever I want it to look like. But when he's doing it every day, is he going to struggle? So you'll see me push his hair kind of all over the place where I think he might push it and wear it. And then that way I can kind of determine at that point if he's going to have a hard time or not. could part it right there he does that and I want to just cut into this just a tiny bit on that edge soften it up And softening those ends. So I go in about two inches cut lift out and then I go one inch cut lift out and that'll soften those ends up for me as well. I really like the idea of you being able to have just a little bit of extra texture right back here because I feel like you could get some height if you wanted to. So cut into this. Brows. Oh, yeah. That's how I know I'm getting older because I'll like one day, brows are good. Next day, it's like one inch long. Yeah, they're like poking you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of different product choices that you guys could have uh, for this type of style. Um, these are kind of the three of my go-tos, right? So I have Barber's Classic, Reformer, or Clean Cut. So Barber's Classic is going to give you that oily kind of feel. So if Matt was going to style his hair wet and just kind of go, this would be the product I would say. Um, if it's blown dry, kind of smoothed out, and you want to create that volume in there and just kind of have more of a textured look. You could go with clean cut or reformer. For me, reformer is an even more matte finish, which 
perfect for guys like us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so I'll work that through. All right, Candace is looking good. All right, we'll take it. Yep, yep. Let it begin. All right, so I'll start working this through the back. Let me turn you to the side a little bit. So this is kind of where I'll start. I want to really have a good amount of product just on the edges because I want the separation from these little bits. Then, once I get that, then I'll start working through the sides, and I can either, this point, start moving the sides back, but just, I work the product through my hands, and then I twist it with my fingertips. My fingertips have product on it, so as I go through the hair, I just kind of twist it and uh, create pieces that go together. So I'll work my way through there, into the back, get a little bit of volume going there. I like expanding this just a little bit. Um, then work the product into my hands again. This cut does bring out the Bradley Cooper <laughs> eyes. All right. I think that was a compliment. Does the Bradley Cooper live around here or something? I think his mom does. His mom yeah, does. That's what. Apparently, funny story again. Um, Somebody was telling me the other day that um, Bradley Cooper, he works out at the gym here, I guess. Really? When he's, like, visiting his mom, he'll yeah. go to Cornerstone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one morning, the person that was telling the story said that they were in the parking lot, and it was packed at, like, 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And it was literally, like, every mom, not mom, but, like, every, like, woman in town yeah. was, like, here, like, and at the gym because they heard he was there. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, yeah. Because he was <laughs> he was there the day before, so they were just trying to see if he was going to be there in the morning <laughs> the next day. That's Word travels fast. It really does. <laughs> you just need to walk in there with your mask on. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not that you need to. You're <laughs> married, but yeah, that's true. I don't. Even, I don't really even know what I'm talking about. Still, you know, yeah. Oh. All right, a little bit more. So I like the height, but this is the thing. You don't want to put a ton of product in your hands and then just shove it up in there. You just kind of work little by little with your fingertips. So, Gary, I see that you're saying that you missed the live event. If you guys don't want to miss the events, download our app, FSE Now. Go to freesaloneducation.com. You can see it there. And uh, you'll get alerts on your phone of all the new classes added. So, um, so you don't miss anything. You'll have the link. You can click right to it, get to the chat, start hanging out with us. All right, so let me zoom in. So a couple things. You could definitely wear this more down. I'm in in-between mode here. Um, as I turn them around, you guys are going to see kind of how the texture just starts to play in. Um, and it's nice and full, but it's not like uh, bulky and it's not helmety at all. Uh, I like the volume that we create in the back here. And then kind of the edge, let's see if I can brighten it up a little bit. So all this texture here, and then a little bit longer uh, areas in the nape. And then when we come around to the side here, you can see how you can tuck this. You could wear it forward if you want to. It really doesn't, doesn't really matter. It'll go both ways. And then you got the longer bits there. And then some shorter texturizing pieces right here on the top. See this without the, get your neck a little bit. So 
So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Should have brought one of your songs or something. Could have yeah. played that. Yeah, that's right. That would have been good. Yeah. Next time. Next time. Yeah. I'll have more hair to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? All right, let me take this off real quick. Turn you a little bit. What do you think? Do you like it? I love it, yeah. Oh. Thank you. You can see, like... Yeah, Gary, sorry. Once it's an hour past the live stream, they delete on the app. So you probably... It was only up there for a short window. But I'll get tomorrow's up there so you can join us 10 a.m. tomorrow. So, yeah, dig this. Uh, still got some length in there. Not bulky. Lots of texture. Um, super cool style. Matt, what is your Instagram? Uh, Do you have Instagram? Is that what you use? Bridge Beat Zero. Oh. Let me see. Let's get a little more tight. Yeah. Seriously? We're going to get this. Because you guys got to go. Check it out. There it is. All right, I'm going to put it up on the screen for you guys. As you guys that are watching. Let's see. Where are we at? If you like, <laughs> I think it looks great, but I need to do a side by side with Lady Gaga. All right, yeah. We can do that. Show you guys Instagram.com slash bridge duo. All right, let's see. This is it. Yep. All right, guys. Apparently, I don't follow you either. Now I do. I follow you personally. All right. Uh, and on Facebook too, right? So if they wanted to go on Facebook, they could find you there as well. Um, but yeah, go check out Matt. He does tons of music stuff. It's super talented. And uh, you guys can follow along there. Um, all of you better go follow him. <laughs> you can see his Bradley Cooper eyes every day. <laughs> every day. All right, cool. Well... Guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Glad you guys all like it. Um, your cut looks great. I've been wanting to learn more longer men's cuts. Well, there you go, Smomo. We did it. Um, looks great. Need a sign. Oh, yeah, we got that one. Uh, amazing result again. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, both Matts. <laughs> Sweet. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you all for tuning in. Remember, we'll be live tomorrow. We're live pretty much every day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, with Brian tomorrow doing some hair color. So make sure you download the FSE Now app. Go to MinervaBeauty.com if you guys are looking for salon furniture, you want to upgrade your equipment, go check them out. And that is pretty much it. So appreciate you guys. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Share the show if you can. Hope you got a lot out of today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much.